Bill 619 and News 10 continues to look at our state of education in California. Continued cuts in classrooms mean many students and parents are struggling to find a way for their kids to succeed. And that's when we got an email from Julie Anderson. She's one of our viewers and she said, I homeschool my kids and I love the name of her book. It says, Quickest Way to Insanity, Homeschool Your Kids. And I think lots of us that don't homeschool our kids are thinking, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and you're a mom of three boys. I was saying Dan can relate too. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your experience of homeschooling. Well, I started 16 years ago um, with the beginning of my first son, and I homeschooled all three for 16 years, all the way from kindergarten to graduation. My youngest graduated last April, and uh, we went and celebrated, and I came home and wrote the book. <laughs> now, what was your thinking at the time? Because nowadays, with all the cuts, a lot of parents are saying, hey, I can give them a better education at home than they might get at school. Was it similar back in the day? It was. There were several factors that had me make that decision. Part of it was just wanting to be as much a part of their lives as I possibly could be, as well as wanting to control their education and make sure they got a really good education and to protect them. I mean, there's so mm -hmm. many dangers in a school system right now, and there were back then. So I kind of, it was a multiple reasons that I decided to do that. Well, and you look at the schooling that teachers go through, too, to prepare them mm -hmm. on how to educate kids. What did, how did you feel? Did you feel like, oh, geez, I've got to really get up to speed on how to educate my kids? You know, I am such a fiery, independent person. <laughs> I, mean, I couldn't tell that at all. <laughs> it didn't take a whole lot. I just, I'm a digger and reader myself, so it was just a matter of figuring out what was going to work best for our family and what was going to work best for each child. And I did take extra classes and little things here and there along the way. I have some mm -hmm. special tutoring that I did under a, a, a gal, and so she helped me with the brain a lot. And that really helped me to understand the brain of each child and how to help teach and train each of them individually. What about the social aspects for your three boys and the interaction that they might have had at a school? Did they get some of that in a different way? How did you make up for that? Oh, absolutely. My kids were always doing something. We had them in 4-H for six years. Mm -hmm. They took uh, constantly taking extra classes. They had computer classes. They had rock climbing classes, archery classes, um, gymnastics. So they were always out in the, you know, in social environments. Plus, they volunteered every week in the community a little bit and sometimes 50 and now they're up to 70 hours a month that they're volunteering in the community so they're constantly we're in social settings. What about the cost too? Is there any co a kind of supplement that you get for it or is that just independent out of your own pocketbook? You know there are several different ways you can do it. You can be completely independent, file with the state superintendent as a school yourself mm -hmm. and then it's all your own expense or you can, it, we're in Northern California, we have some wonderful charter schools that are publicly funded schools, so it's our tax dollars that pay for the charter schools, and that's the method that I used. So they allowed me, I poured through the curriculum books myself, I chose the curriculum for each of my children, but it was funded by, by the school, or by the charter school. And the bottom line, how did the boys measure up to students their same age because they're all in college now yeah well the oldest isn't um, the two middle ones have taken some college the oldest is is studying with an engineer but they every year part of using the charter school one of the requirements is that they had to do the mandatory state testing mm -hmm. And so they did that every spring, just like all of the other students. And they measured, they measured very well. They measured in some, you know, they were high in some and low in some, right. just like the average child. Um, my middle boy was very, his reading comprehension and everything was college level by the time he was, you know, 10 or 12 years old. Right. So they were just right in there with the, the public school. Well, children. despite what the book says, you seem sane to me. Well, and she's <laughs> she's been traveling all over the country. We were trying to get her on the show after she wrote me, and she said, "I'm in Cincinnati, and I'm in here and there, but I'll be home in these two days, and I'll come in and talk about it because it sounds like you're very passionate about this, and I am, and want to encourage am. other people to potentially do it." Quickest way to insanity: homeschool your kids. Julie Anderson, thanks so much for taking the time to talk with us, and good luck with the book. Thank you. And again, our special on education continues on Wednesday, April 14th. That's going to be on News 10 at 6 p.m. You can email your questions and thoughts to now at news10.net and we'll hopefully get those addressed as we head to our News 10 education special. And we'll be right back with a quick look at sports on News 10. Good morning. Thanks again, Julie. Thank you. It was very nice.